will actually happen. So. Smile. <laughs> Because you may not be smiling at the end. Who knows? <laughs> now, I've never spoken anywhere where alcohol was served, so um, I feel certain that might improve improve things. So we'll see. Um, you obviously just heard about carbon use. Before that, how many people have heard of carbon use? Okay, good. And how many people are signed up for our free daily email newsletter? Okay, we got a few. You can take out your the rest of you, you can take out your phones and do that right now at cardinalmuse.org. I don't mind. So I'm going to talk about um, the changing media landscape and then I will take whatever questions you have and we'll see how that goes. So 40 years ago, 1982, Governor of Virginia, Chuck Robb at the time, Presented state budget that was $15.7 billion. Considered quite extravagant at the time. The budget that the governor presented, Governor Northam presented before he left office, and which just was in the process of getting finalized, it's $158 billion. Same, basically the same number, it's just a decimal point moved over, but yeah, with a few billion dollars among the friends. So the budget now is 10 times bigger than it was 40 years ago. Does that mean that it gets 10 times as much scrutiny? No. It gets less. Now why is that? Well, because there are fewer journalists around to ask questions about it. That's why. Here are some examples. When I joined the Roanoke Times, back in the dark ages of 1982, we have one full-time reporter in the state capitol year-round, and when the General Assembly was in session, we had two in Richmond, at least two, sometimes three, and one time I remember four. So it was you know, a bunch of people there. Today, um, Roanoke Times covers the, the state capitol with you know, a, you know, they have a reporter from Roanoke covering it on a part-time basis. So we've gone from at least two to less than one. Norfolk, the Virginia pilot at one time had three or four people full-time in the state capitol. I don't think they have any left there anymore. Um, Richmond Times Dispatch, I don't know how many they had back in the day. It felt like their whole staff covered state government. Um, but there's probably at least you know, a good half dozen or so people. Um, now, if you're going to give a generous account, you know, maybe three um, covering state government, so, you know, Whatever the numbers are, a significant reduction. And of course, that, that makes sense when you think about what has happened to newspaper staffs um, you know, around the country. Um, you know, most are at probably a third or more the size of what they used to be, maybe even just you know, a dozen years ago or more. Um, you know, the numbers are going to vary from place to place, but um, yeah. Yeah, a third would be a generous figure in most cases. So if you're wondering, you know, how come, you know, the local paper or and the same thing has happened to you know, television too. We just think about newspapers more. You know, if, if the question is, you know, why aren't they covering X, whatever X is? Well, there, there's your answer. There's just fewer people around to, to cover it. Um, now we're all adults here, so I, I will bring the subject up very gingerly though. Um, but we all remember the controversy over the former governor's yearbook photo. So the question is, you know, why wasn't that discovered when he was running for office? He ran you know, statewide twice, once for lieutenant governor, once for governor. How come no one found it then? Well, that's probably the answer. Is there are a lot fewer people, you know, Covering politics and state government. Uh, I remember in 1985, uh, we had four people at the Rome of Times covering the statewide races that year. You know, now it's, like I said, you know, less than, you know, half a person. Um, so, yeah, I don't know that we would have found it then, but we were probably, you know, four times more likely to. Um, so you just do, do the math. So why does that happen? Well, that's simple. It's because of this. 
Every day, people vote in the marketplace that they want to consume their news digitally. Now, that shouldn't matter, because every news organization has a website, right? And readers go to those websites. The problem is that advertisers do not necessarily follow. They're going someplace else. What used to be newspaper advertisers were being vacuumed up by Facebook and Google and other sites like that. Here, here's an example I was told a few years ago by a wedding photographer in the Rongo Valley. In the old days, his only real choice was to advertise on the you know, weddings page, the, the Sunday weddings page of the, of the paper. Even though most people are not getting married in the next six months. That was you know, the, really the, the only place he had that you know, he could put his advertising because the people who were getting married in the next six months you know, probably were going there. But he knew most of it was being, you know, quote, wasted. Well, then along comes the Zuckerberg machine, Facebook. He can now advertise on there. His ad only appears when someone changes their relationship status to engage, and he can geofence it so the ad only shows up within whatever mile radius he wants to work. So before, you know, most of his advertising money was, in effect, being wasted. You know, now it's all good. It's all going to people who, you know, are going to get married in the next six months or whatever. So, you know, just multiply that across every other industry. Well, here's why that matters. Historically, newspapers made 85% of their revenue from advertising. The money you paid in your subscription price was really almost incidental. I was always told that the paper basically covered the cost of the paper. You wanted the content, all that was, you know, the, the revenue for that came, came from advertising. Since 2006, new, newspaper advertising revenue in this country is 20% of what it was. So from here in 2006, now it's 20%. Yeah, that's obviously a big drop. And you know, the laws of economics you know, dictate if, if your revenues, you know, if you only got 20% of your revenues, you know, you got to cut expenses somewhere. Well, the main expense is people. Um, so that's why you're seeing all of those cuts I mentioned of you know, fewer journals. You know, some, something has to give. Yeah, it's not that newspaper companies are evil or stupid. Some might be. Um, you know, they're just desperate. Um, you know, they, they've got a math problem they're trying to solve, and there's really only one way um, yeah, to solve that. I mean, there might be others, but you know, basically, you know, revenues go down, you've got to cut cut expenses. So, yeah, the interest in news has not declined, but what we're seeing is there's no longer a viable business model for local news. Now, the key word there is local. Nationally, things are going great. The digital revolution has been great for things like the New York Times and the Washington Post, because they basically are national papers covering national things. And before, they could only sell their physical product as far as they could truck it. Now they can sell, you know, digital subscriptions all around the world. Um, so they are, they are going very good. And you see lots of other national news sites spring up. Because you can spread the cost of a, you know, a DC reporter across the whole country, revenue-wise. You can't really do that on a local basis. Um, you know, I hate to tell you, but you know, interest in the Allegheny County Board of Supervisors probably runs out about the county line. Um, you know, same same with anything else. You know, Rogo City Council. You know, big deal in Rogo, but you know, once you get past you know the city limits, you know, interest goes down. But you know. You, you know, you still got a staff reporter, a couple of city council, and the planning commission, and the school board, and all, all the other things. So, so the math becomes very, very difficult. So what is happening across the country 
is you're seeing growth, really very sudden growth, of nonprofit online news sites. When we started last September, there were 300 around the country. Half of those had started in, in the previous two years. Since we started, there were at least 60 more, and there are more coming online, not quite every day, but you know, at, at a very good clip. These come in all shapes, sizes, flavors. Um, some are trying to replace a local newspaper and you know, cover a particular city or county. Some are on a statewide basis. Some, like ours, cover you know, part of a state or a region. Others are devoted to particular issues, um, you know, education, whatever. Um, so there's this great experimentation going on around the country. So you're seeing the rise of a whole new ecosystem take place. Good example is up in Charlottesville. The legacy newspaper there, the Charlottesville Daily Progress, is now down to two reporters. I'm not sure what they have been, but they have been a lot more. They might, they, they've got some on the sports side, I, I'm not sure whether they're full-time, part-time, or what, but on the news side, they have two. The nonprofit news site there, Charlottesville Tomorrow, has five. So there, there's a market where, you know, the nonprofit online news site has eclipsed what, you know, the old newspaper is able to do, whether it's, you know, just two in news or you count two people in sports and make it four. Um, we at Cardinal, um, I tell people, you know, if you think of newspapers as a department store, selling, you know, lots of things, we're more like one of the specialty stores on the out parcels of the mall. Um, we set out to do a few things and a few things well. You can decide whether we do them well, but we certainly do a few things, and then there are lots of things we we don't try to do. Um, our particular focus is to cover the politics, economy, and culture of Southwest and South South Virginia. Um, the breaking point for me and my previous employer was when the political beat got abolished. Because um, you know, you know, the, the idea that they were going to pick up all of their political coverage from the Richmond Town Dispatch you know, it was just an anathema to me. They may do very fine coverage, but you know, they're not covering our legislators or our issues. So one of our goals with Cardinal was to make sure that we have a full-time reporter in the state capitol. So we had two reporters, one in Richmond, which makes us the only news organization west of Richmond with a full-time reporter in the state capitol when you're around. And then we have a reporter in Rogo, a, a business reporter, because our central organizing principle is to cover how the economy is changing in this, this side of the state. Uh, many of the places we cover, in our coverage area, it's not rigidly defined, but you know, basically, you know, as far north as probably Bath County, Lexington, you know, Lynchburg, Farmville, Danville, and then every, everything west. So we, we generally just call that southwestern south side, but that's, that's a simplistic way of defining it. But that covers a lot of areas that have seen their traditional employers decline or sometimes die altogether, coal, textiles, tobacco, furniture, um, and places that are trying to invent a new economy, and we're trying to, to tell the story of how they're doing that. Um, so everything we do, we do with one reporter west of Richmond. We, we sometimes get the appearance of being bigger than we are because we do use a lot of freelancers, um, mostly former daily newspaper journalists who've been forced out of the business and you now have other jobs. Uh, but our, our reporting staff is, is two. That will go to three next month. Um, thanks to some generous grant funding, uh, we will have a reporter staffed in Danville um, and we are presently working to raise money um, for other positions. Um, there's presently no full-time education reporter west of Richmond. Yeah, education's a big deal, right? 
Um, there is no full-time health care reporter in Western Berkshire. In fact, near as we can tell, there's only one full-time health care reporter in the state for the Virginia Mercury. Obviously, health care is a big force in the economy. Those are two positions we're trying to raise money for. Um, also trying to raise money for um, some particular geographic beats, some of them far southwest. And I could go on and on, um, but you can come here to hear, hear all that. Um, but in general, you know, you wonder, you know, like I said, you know, you wonder, you know, why aren't things being covered? It's because, you know, there aren't people there to, to do them. Um, so we're, that, that's how we're attempting to, to solve that. I think, and I will wrap this up too, soon and take your questions, um, all of this probably hits hardest on places like Clifton Forge. Um, and you know, rural areas uh, across the state. You know, I, I remember back in the day. You know, at, at the wrong times. You know, we tried to vigorously cover. You know, a large part of the state. Um, you know, over the years, as things shrank. You know, you, you pull back in. So, you know, I guarantee you, if there's some bad news here, you know, um, you know that will get discovered and reported. Um, but, you know, the, the quiet good news probably won't be. Um, I mean, that's probably always been the, the, the case in journalism, but even more so now. Uh, on your little cards that uh, I've handed out on the, the one side, you'll see a funky little map of Virginia. That's a map of our readership. Um, we set out to reach, you know, the areas we're trying to cover, southwest and south side. We accidentally built a statewide audience. Uh, I assure you that was not our intent, um, but the size of the bubble there indicates the, the size of the readership. So, so most days our second biggest source of readers um, are in Richmond. Um, and amazingly, we've gotten the attention of you know, important people. Um, yeah, first thing this morning, I got a text from someone in the Attorney General's office commenting on the story we published. Um, so. Like I said, we, we sort of punch above our weight. Um, but that's our story, which fits into a larger story, and I will be happy to take your questions.